How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Anthem video. I'm Chaos Prime and today we're going to be talking about a number of things. Ranging from the VIP demo, the good, the bad and the ugly sadly. We have a new VIP trailer to look at, gonna brush on alliances a bit more, we have future difficulty, gear scores and so much more to get through. If you find this video useful, leave a like and subscribe. If you really like what you hear, support the channel by sharing. We set a goal of 3k subs this week, let's see if we can get to it, getting ever closer with each passing day. Before I get started on the video, I wanted to take a moment and mention a channel I noticed that's almost at the 1k sub mark, Anthem Central. The first 1000 subs is always the hardest to get, so if we can help him get to that 1000 sub mark, that would be amazing. You lot have given me so much over the past weeks in support, so I wanted to pass on that goodwill to others that also could use it. And yes, I have also subscribed, so please, if you can, and you do like what he's doing, check it out. A link to his channel is in the description below, show your support, and hopefully he can get past that 1000 mark and get on his way. With that said, let's start with the trailer. First, the manifold. Then, we boost your javelin. You silence the heart of rage, and boom, everyone lives happily ever after. Come on, that trailer was epic, right? 30 seconds of pure bliss. How many of you can't wait to get your hands on it this Friday? I know I can't. However, this leads us perfectly into the next topic that I want to get into, the demo. So it seems when the alpha test was happening, a lot of feedback was given. And over the past few weeks, I've noticed that alpha testers discreetly coming forward and asking questions about whether their feedback has been noted, whether they've been acted upon. No comments from the developers have been made on the forums. Have they even read them? What you're about to see now is pretty much confirmation that the developers not only read them, but acted on them. This tweet here says, after a mission, you can head back to Tarsis and catch up with some of the amazing characters we've created for you, or head back to brand new launch bay, hang out with your friends, use the forge, reload, and grab a new contract. Yeah, we listen to you. More details soon. Here, check this out. As you can guess, the actual launch bay wasn't even a thing before the alpha. However, from the feedback that was given by the community, by the players, the developers realized that this is something they should do. It really does seem that the developers are taking to heart everything that the community is saying, within reason of course, that actually makes sense and will benefit the game. And ultimately, this is becoming a game for the community, by the community, made by the developers. And as we all know, the developers themselves are gamers first, developers second. You have to have a gaming heart in order to be a developer, right? In, especially in the games industry. So with that said, this is some pretty cool stuff. And it's also been confirmed that the launch bay will have 16 javelins support. So there'll be up to 16 players there in that new social hub that was created just for this. Sadly, it's not going to be in the demo. It's not going to be in the demo for the 1st of February either. It will be there for the 22nd of February when the game launches. They wanted to leave something for you to see when you finally get there. So that's the good stuff. Now we get to the bad and ugly, I guess. Michael Gamble said, a point of clarification for you all. Just because you can download the demo on the store does not mean you can play it. Everyone, even non-VIPs, can download it. The VIPs will be let in on the 25th based on your EA account being entitled. What does entitled mean? It means that your account is actually active and based on your pre-order, it's basically been seen that you are now eligible for the VIP demo. And this was fine for the physical copies because you got a code, you went to the website from the video that I released yesterday which describes the whole process. If you followed that with any physical copy, you would have got your friend codes immediately and you can start distributing them. The problem arises with the Xbox One, the PS4, and Origin if you purchased it digitally. If you did, as Mike Gamble says here, if you pre-ordered from Xbox or PlayStation stores, your codes won't work till the demo actually starts. So sit tight. In fact, you won't even get your code. Even though the FAQ on their website 
says that there's a friends tab you don't get this until you sign in on the 25th you won't get your friend codes now i know what you're thinking if i don't get my friend codes how are my friends gonna play i don't want to sit down and wait half an hour an hour two hours for them to download 30 gigs of the demo i want to play them now i want to play them immediately i'm raring to go well, that's why the demo is now available for all to download. So if your friends can pre-download it, and when a demo comes out, you will log in to the game, refresh the page on the account, you will gain access to the links. All your friends have to do from that point on is take those links, follow the instructions, complete it, sign in with their EA account that they're using currently to try and log into the game. And with that, once that is done, they will gain access to the VIP demo. It's that simple. It's a bit of faffing around, sadly, but this is the only workaround that's going to be there. So get your friends to pre-download the game, pre-download the VIP demo. Once it's downloaded, just hold tight until the 25th. Once the 25th arrives, you sign in, you'll gain access to your digital codes, and then you can distribute them quickly. It should be a five minute process from that point for them to get up and running, and then you're good to go. Like I said, it is a blemish, but it's not the end of the world, and there is an amicable workaround for it. So that's pretty much most of what I wanted to talk about for the demo. In regards to what's accessible and not accessible, not all areas will be accessible, like I said, the launch area will not be available, certain parts of the map will be cordoned off, you'll have access to a stronghold, you'll have access to free exploration, uh, potentially a mission, I can't remember 100%, but otherwise, for the two days that you're going to get, it's pretty much just getting a feel of the game and how it plays, and seeing if it is for you. The developers feel confident enough to give you this opportunity, do keep in mind that this build probably will have bugs, it probably will have issues, simply because it's a build from December and we are now pretty much coming to the end of January. That's a long time in games development, so the demo that we're going to get in the 1st of February will be closer to the release candidate than this one ever will be. Moving on to Alliances. Now if you watch the E3 trailer back in 2017, 2018, you will have noticed that there was this one particular moment where a javelin was sitting in the Fort Tarsus and it had Ally of the Week over it. At the time it was said that only one person will ever get Ally of the Week and what it will entail or what bonuses you will get whenever revealed. Now with the way alliances have changed, people assume that this Ally of the Week will have been gone and pretty much been replaced with another system. It is not. The ally of the week is still here, except now it's the top five. It's not just the top one. The top five get the ally of the week. What does this entail other than a title? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows at this point other than Bioware. They've revealed no information regarding this. But as it stands, the top five of your friends list will get ally of the week. And maybe that means that they'll earn extra coin. I don't. Who knows? But it's pretty cool that you're going to get recognised for the amount of time you invest in Anthem, for the, your dedication to Anthem, and for your time played. I know people are talking about AFKing already, I don't know what they're going to do about that. I don't know if, that's going to, if they're going to try and combat that. If they're not, this kind of defeats the whole purpose, but hey, positive thinking. Positive thinking. People won't be doing that, right? Right, and now we've come to the part of the video where I read a bunch of tweets that were given that I think were useful, that were informative questions that would benefit all of you. So here we go. Maelstrom asked, can you reuse blueprints in crafting and how much gameplay will be around getting crafting ingredients versus grinding events for good loot that you don't have to craft? Ben Irving said you can always use blueprints once you unlock them. They are also scaled to your level. So let's say for example, you get a blueprint at level two and then you get to level 30, you can use that same blueprint at level 30 and you will get a level 30 item, not a level 2. It scales with you as your pilot level levels up, which is pretty cool. However, I do expect the cost of materials to increase as you level up. Of course, this wasn't mentioned, but it's just an assumption. Here we have a question that was asked in chat not long ago. Will we be able to change abilities in the middle of a mission or free play? The answer is no. We don't want you slowing down the team. Choose wisely before starting a mission. So essentially, once you start a mission, you are gridlocked into what you have. Once you start free play, you are gridlocked into what you have. Choose wisely, choose carefully, because you won't be able to change anything you've got until you head back to the forge. This next question is pretty cool. 
are you planning to add higher difficulty in the future for Grandmaster 4, 5, 6 and so on? And it's now confirmed, yes. At launch we will have Grandmaster 1, 2 and 3, but expect 4, 5 and 6 as the game evolves. Maybe even more, or maybe even different difficulty. And with this I assume we will also get a gear score increase, which is exciting stuff, which means the gear score we have now isn't set in stone, and as the difficulties go up, it's going to be pretty exciting. To follow on from this, Avalanchian asks, is it a significant boost from the 45 to 47 in gears power? Ben Irving said yes, if you did it for every item, it is for sure, which means the jumps in power is actually going to be quite noticeable every time you level up, which is pretty damn sweet. One of my biggest complaints in other games is that when I went from power 500 to 550, I never really noticed anything. I went to 600 and I didn't really notice anything. It felt the same. But if Anthem can give me that power feeling, that power satisfaction, then all the power to it. Right, this one was actually a question that I do vividly remember in the chat. I wasn't sure if the person that asked was genuine or not. I did raise a tweet for this, I didn't get a response. However, Fuzzy Goat did. Does the choice of male or female pilot make any visual aesthetic difference to your javelin exosuit? The answer is no. Javelins have no gender. So for the person in the chat that asked that question, I hope you're satisfied. Right, we come to Max gear score and Guiliano asks, any info on what the gear score will cap at launch? Ben Irving said, what is 47 times 11? That's it, I believe. So the answer is 517. It's an odd number, but they did release further tweets when people were actually questioning them as to why it wasn't a rounded number and a weird number like 517, to which they just responded, that's just the way it worked out. So it may very well be 517, it may be higher, it may be lower. All we have is this to go from, but if it is 517, it is an odd number, I have to say. But it doesn't matter. The journey to 517 will well and truly begin. Elvin Ruiz essentially asked, wouldn't it be better to cap the number of component types we could use instead of giving us free reigns in order to balance the game? Ben Irving said some components are unique. You can only equip one of them. Others are not, and you can equip many. So think of this like the Destiny system in the exotics. If it's an exotic type component, you can only equip one. If they're legendary, still referring to the Destiny status, you can equip multiples of them. So essentially, that's, I believe, how it's going to work. This next one is another interesting question. I don't recall seeing this being asked before, though I probably just missed it. Will weapons have customization, like limited choosing of attachments in terms of sights, barrels, magazine types, or is it pretty much a random roll on what the weapon is going to be like? The response is, no weapon customization at all. There are parts of it, like inscriptions, that are random, so it will be a complete random roll. No modification of weapon parts at all. Not saying there won't be anything in the future, but for launch and for the time being, this is how it's going to be and this is how it's going to remain. And that's pretty much it. We had a cool VIP demo, which I hope you liked. We also got to see the new launch pad area. I hope you all now have a better understanding of when you're going to get your friendship demos. If you bought the physical version of the game, you can get it now. If you haven't and you bought the digital version of the game, you do have to wait till the 25th. It's awesome to see that Ally of the Week is still here and still going to be a thing. But instead of one person getting it, the top five will now get it. Pretty awesome stuff. And finally, lots of nice quality of life questions and a bunch of questions that you guys had that I was finally able to get a response for. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be live streaming on YouTube this Friday with Anthem. So if you're not able to get on, drop by, say hi, and let's get gaming. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. We're really close to that 3000 sub mark would be really awesome to get to it by Sunday. So hopefully we can meet that. Again, don't forget to show your support for Anthem Central. Let's help them get to that 1000 mark at the very least, as it does make the world of difference for any channel. With that said, thank you for watching, thank you for being here, and until the next video, or the next stream, depending on which comes first, remain legend.